What is up? Welcome back. If you haven't been here before, welcome. My name, I'm Cadillac Dan. And I'd like to start out by saying thank you to you guys. Uh, we passed like 160 some subscribers. Pretty cool. But today, still messing with the priest. About to wrap it up. It's coming to a slow finish. Uh, I'm about to kind of figure out the wiring. Uh, the guy that built it before actually did a pretty awesome job on it and he kind of hooked me up. So I thank him for that. Made my life a little bit easier. But I'm going to take this minute to show you guys uh, kind of how to diagnose stuff, a little bit of how to wire stuff up. Basically, how to diagnose. So if you have a bad solenoid, or tell which wire is which. Uh, also, maybe how to explain how a switch works. Uh, that way, if you don't understand it, maybe you'll understand it afterwards. Let's get to it. I'm going to show you basically what I got for a little test rig. Uh, to start things out, I'm going to kind of explain. Electricity is basically a big loop. You need to connect your positive through whatever you're going on back to a ground. Now, it basically goes from your power to your solenoids, through your solenoids to your pump. That makes your pump spin. The other side of the connection, I guess you'd say, goes from your ground all the way through your rack, the rack bolts up there, comes up, back to your battery, connecting the circuit, connecting the big loop. So that's the easiest way to, I can think to keep that in mind. So what we're going to do here, I got my ground, got my little test switch here. I rigged this thing up years and years ago, it's been pretty much invaluable. It's just a handy little thing to have in the trunk. You can jump wires, you don't have to worry about a live wire sitting around. I mean, you kind of do. I usually wrap, used to have it wrapped up in electrical tape, but that's gone. That's gone a long time ago. So now I just keep an eye on it. Got me some little alligator clips on it. I'll then connect it to the battery, connect it to whatever I need to. And then if I need to connect it to the top of the solenoid, if I need to connect it to a wire, it's easy. Don't have to worry about it falling off. It hangs on there pretty good. So I'll basically show you right now. We know which wires are going to what. And right there's a, this was the front pump, so those are the front wires. And those are the back wires. What I was saying earlier, the guy did a really good job. He ran, actually those are the dump wires. The green wires are the power. But he ran two wires. So I'm assuming he has a six prong, well I know he has a six prong switch in there because he has two dumps. But he basically wired it up for four pumps. And it makes life easy on me because now instead of having to run an additional wire for an additional pump, he's already got it wired. So I just got to figure out which is left and which is right, which that's what we're going to do today. So you could go on the back of your switch plate or switch box and see what wire is what. That's the easiest, really. Uh, but say it's mounted in the dash or in a center console and you can't really figure out what's what. Well, the easiest thing you can do is take all your power off or at least take... The power from your leading battery to your solenoids you know you don't really have to worry about the one going from the solenoids to the battery you just want to disconnect your power coming in that way your pump's not going on turning on but we got our ground hooked up we'll hook this up to our battery just like so and then when you click it that works so that's not the way to find out what switch you want We'll come back to that. So to find out if you got a bad solenoid, uh, easy way here. Like I said, just hook your test switch up. You can activate it in the trunk. You don't have to go back into the car. And uh, we'll get a voltmeter. And I'll show you an easy way to figure out which is bad if you got a bad one. I actually did this a long time ago when I put batteries in the Cadillac, but the camera didn't work. So here we are again. Got a little bit of time. Figured I might as well make the video. This is a very, very convenient tool to have. If you don't have one, you should probably get one. And the one I suggest getting, get one with that little symbol right there. You can also use ohms. They're kind of the same. But that one beeps. Uh, I got this one from the park store. It was 10 bucks, 20 bucks maybe. I don't even think it was 20 I think it was 10 bucks. But what you want to do, put it on that little symbol there. What that does, it's called continuity. 
when you put those two together it'll beep that basically tells you the circuit is complete the loop is complete and as I said before all this is is just a loop so you get power coming in it goes through there to that one through that one to that one through that one to that one to your pump and that is how you can trace down what is bad in a setup you know, if you're losing power somewhere usually it's your solenoids you know nine times out of ten well eight times out of ten it's your solenoids could be a bad battery could be a bad motor could be a bad switch that is also possible but most commonly you can use this on pretty much any of those scenarios and i'm going to disconnect i'm going to disconnect this last one basically I'll give you a live example of what it would be if you had a bad solenoid you know show you a, a real world scenario so we got our test switch hooked up our solenoids are clicking we got our voltmeter on continuity. All right, and what you want to do, basically touch each side of the solenoid. So you can do this one handed. And then when you activate it, it should beep. We're good. Move on to your next one. This power is coming through that, it's flowing through onto the next one. Remember, this one is disconnected, so it's not being activated at all. And if it was stuck, you would be able to touch that and it would beep, whether it was connected or not. Because there's a little washer in here that basically slaps back and forth and it connects those two together. So if your solenoid is stuck, you're gonna have a you're gonna have continuity whether the power is on or not. And therefore it'll be a bad solenoid. But we'll get that to where we can get a con. Continuity test on it. And voila, it's not working. We'll go ahead and hook it back up. And it should work. Seems it worked when the car come in. And just like that, it works. That shows us power is going all the way through the solenoid. And you can even put your power on or put your lead on here, connect it to your motor. You know, make sure it's going all through your wire. You don't have a bad wire. Many, many different ways of using the continuity test to figure things out. And now I'll show you how to use the continuity test to trace down a wire. Like I said, this is all a big cycle, a big loop. So we just got to figure out what wire it's coming out of. It's going to come out of a, a positive wire and go to a ground. Basically is how it goes. So we're going to come out of our power wire here. This goes to our switch box. Think of it as this here. This goes to our switch box. Now on a switch, the center is always power. I mean, unless you got something weird going on, which I've never really seen before. I mean, it could be it could be done differently, I'm, I assume, but I wouldn't want to do it this way, and no one I've ever met has done it this way. But your power is in the middle, and then whatever switch you want or whatever pump or dump you want to go to, you're going to wire accordingly. And I actually have a broken switch that I'll show you that kind of sums it up pretty easily. Because when I first started doing hydraulics, you know, I first started wiring, a buddy of mine showed me, he's like, you know, which way do you think the switch goes? I was like, duh, you push it up. It goes to that one. That is 100% wrong, and I will show you why. This switch broke perfectly for a demonstration demonstration process. I don't know how, but I come across it one day, and I was like, man, that is perfect. You know, trying to explain to somebody how a switch works. As I was saying, you know, you'd think if you push it up, it would go to connect this one, but it doesn't. It literally makes, you know, think of it as like a line, like an X. Back here goes to here. Up here goes to here. And this is how. See how it rocks the contacts? That is how a switch works. So keep that in mind when you're wiring a switch up. If it goes up, the connection is going to the bottom. You know, if you have it like that. If your switch goes up, the connection is going to the bottom. If the switch goes down, your connection goes to the top. 
So maybe that'll clear things up if you had any kind of confusion on how a switch works. But this is a wire that goes to a ground, so that's not going to do us any good whatsoever. This is a wire that goes to a dump. And we need to figure out which wire is which, left or right. Actually, I'm going to do it over here because this is my back dumps. So I need to figure out which is the left and which is the right. And these are actually the same color. There's a little black stripe in there so we can tell them apart. But say somebody wired them the same color through all the wire. I say that because I've done it before. It's cheaper to buy one roll of wire. Uh, it's a nightmare when you have to go back into it, and it's a nightmare when anybody else has to go into it. But say somebody did, did do that, here's how you would fix it, or here's how you would track down what wire is what. Same scenario. We're going to test the other dump. Still got my other lead hooked up to the switch wire. I'm going to undo this one, hook my lead into it, and then we'll hit the switch. Everything's good. It should beep. So we got our test lead hooked up to our switch power, which we're not going to use any power on this. We're just connecting a loop is all we're doing. And my voltmeter just turned off. All right, so we're just connecting a loop. It's going to go from here to the switch and to, to here. And that's going to connect back to our meter, and our meter will beep whenever that switch, whenever that circuit is connected. And if you couldn't see, uh, it's got a little quick connects. I dig those. Uh, the other guy that built the car did did that, and it's a good idea. It's nice in case you got to remove a pump, and it's nice in case you got to put a lead in there too. So we got it all set up. I'm gonna go hit the switch. You'll hear it beep. Hopefully, I'll hear it beep, and we will know which switch is which. That is the left rear dump. So obviously we know the other one is the right rear dump, but we can go ahead and test it. That way we're sure that wire is actually hooked up. And we'll go ahead our right switch. It's all good. So now we know which switch is which. And you don't even have to have the battery hooked up to do that. Uh, when testing the solenoids, you do have to have a battery hooked up because you have to have power to be able to energize those solenoids. So hopefully that'll help you if you have any problems with switches or understanding how to diagnose something. Uh, helped me out through the years. Hopefully it'll help you out as well. It's pretty simple once you get in there and get to it. But if you liked it, you know, obviously like the video, uh, subscribe. Got more work coming up on this thing. Uh, about to wrap it up. Uh, comment if you have any questions, you know, if you need anything, you know, anything lowrider related, obviously. Uh, try and make a video if I got the sources to make it with, you know, if I got a certain problem I'm working on a vehicle or, you know, I got something here I can throw together. I'll see what I can do. And there you have it. So we'll wrap it up. Uh, we'll see you on the next go around.